kiwanele corona A very good afternoon to our viewers who have just joined us and welcome back to those who were with us from the beginning. I am Nogwazi Lamini and you are tuned, you are still tuned in actually to Eswatini TV and this is Home Study. Right now it's the Form 5's turn and we are doing mathematics with Mr. Zweli Mamba. Also joining us in the studio are our sign language interpreters, Tobile Fagutze and Linda Mamba. Zweli, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm good, Gwazi. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, Zoli. I understand today we're doing ge uh, coordinate geometry, right? Yes. All exactly. right. Okay, without wasting any time, sir, I think I'll let you start your lesson. Okay, thank you, Gwazi. Uh, viewers at home, I believe it's a good day. Uh, a special greetings to all the HCSE mathematics learners. I hope you will enjoy today's lesson. It is a continuation of our pre previous lesson. Okay. So, uh, the first thing that I want us to uh, gather uh, with us, make sure you have a pencil, a pen, a ruler, a calculator, your squared exercise book, okay? Uh, again, dear learners, uh, maybe just to, I can skip this. Uh, the importance of coordinate geometry is that we use coordinate geometry in 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 construction also in design you see the buildings we have when you look at them they have different shapes okay uh, and also des the designs around your houses they have different shapes that is purely coordinate geometry as it deals with different shapes uh, and points and locations so this uh, concept is very important so i hope you are ready now dear learners so we can continue the, the so the objectives for this lesson are four so these are the objectives um the first thing you learners you are expected at the end of the lesson to be able to find the gradient of perpendicular lines also you should be able to show that three points are collinear also you should be able to show that uh, lines are parallel or perpendicular to each other and also the fourth objective dear learners is that you should be able to use the general form of an equation of a straight line so we have a general form so we'll look into that so let's start the learners uh, so here is our introduction so my introduction dear learners is just to remind you as you can see there you have recall so i want you to remember that the gradient the gradient which is the measure of steepness okay we denote the gradient by a small letter m so small letter m represent the gradient okay so this you have covered this in your jc mathematics or your previous mathematics that's how we find this measure okay that number representing the steepness okay again remember we did mention that the bigger the absolute value meaning that the number uh, with ignoring the sign so the bigger the number the value of the gradient okay the more the steeper the line also please remember we are here now lines sloping downwards they have a negative gradient okay so we have this line as our example notice this line is sloping downwards remember when we are reading okay we when we are reading a sentence we start from the left to the right that's the same case with this line so when we look at this line we start from this left okay to the right so from the left to the right you can see that this line is sloping downwards okay hence we say lines sloping downwards have a negative gradient and also lines sloping upwards from left to right as you can see it's the, this line is sloping upward it has a positive gradient okay so it's just a reminder for you uh, beautiful learners at home okay so this is another reminder dear learners can you be able to find the gradient of that line 
okay i'm sure you can easily find the gradient of this line that i've given you learners line a b so you can use this formula that you've covered in your previous mathematics okay since we have what two coordinates we are given so we can just go substitute there remember if we let this one be our first coordinate this one uh, the coordinate a so we let the x coordinate of a p x one the y coordinate to be y one the second the other coordinate we let it to be uh, because the second coordinate the x coordinate we let it to be y two the 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 y coordinate will sorry the x coordinate will let it to be x2 the y coordinate will let it to be y2 then you can just go and substitute in that formula then you should get your gradient as what as negative 3 but learners i want to show you another way of finding the gradient of this line because i'll be using this way uh, throughout this lesson we can also find the gradient of this line the learners by this remember we said a line sloping downwards it has a negative gradient so this line is sloping downwards you are reading it from left remember to right so it's look it's it's sloping downwards so we know it has a negative gradient so we can just put that negative okay then we can use uh, the, the the one of la the formula that i show you the one for rise over run so we can come here by rise we mean the vertical distance will be on top so what is this vertical distance that i've highlighted it will be four minus one which is three then you divide by now the 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 run now this we call it the run okay so what is this run the horizontal distance how do we get it to say two minus one which is one so we divide by the run that is one so you see our gradient which we get the negative three in another uh, pretty easy way especially when we are given the graph when the line is shown in a graph okay let's continue it was just a reminder so again another reminder please remember that parallel lines have equal gradient so we have those two parallel lines okay those lines are parallel we have that arrow showing that the lines are parallel so we use the arrows to show that two lines are parallel so when when two lines are parallel we say their gradients are, are equal so always remember this parallel lines have equal gradients from also your previous mathematics your jc also please remember the second bullet we are here now lines parallel to the x axis have a zero gradient okay so this line i've shown you here here is an illustration this line it has a what a zero gradient because it is parallel to this what x axis so yes all lines parallel to the x axis have zero gradient and also all lines the last thing all lines parallel to the y axis they have a what an undefined gradient like this line here this red line is parallel to the y-axis so it has an undefined gradient okay so i was just reminding you all those things okay um so now I, i'm sure we are ready to start at our new concept for form five mathematics for our hcse mathematics okay so this new concept is this concept of collinear points so you have to know this is a new term called linear probably it's a new term to most of you each SSE mathematics learners first let's define what collinear points are so collinear points are three or more points that lie in the same straight line so three or more points that lie in the same straight line we say those points are what are collinear okay so here is an is an example i've given you those uh, points there you see they are blue points and red they are blue points and red points if i can ask you learn, learners at home which points there are collinear is it pqr or abc is it point pqr or abc okay which 
points are collinear here. So I'm sure, learners, you are struggling to tell which points are collinear now, okay? But it is our task today to know how to check how, if points are collinear. We should have a way of showing that points are collinear, okay? Let me give you this other illustration here now. Again, we have the, these points. Now I'm sure it is easier at home for you to tell which points are collinear. Which points are collinear the learners? Most of you, I'm sure they are saying it's point P, Q, and R because they lie on the same straight what? Line. So points lying on the same straight line, you say they are collinear. A, B, C, they are not these three points, the red ones. Okay? They are not collinear because they are not in the same straight line. So now, now there's something i want you to notice because we want to know how to show we want to know how to show that points are collinear how can we show that using the idea of gradient because we've been talking about gradient so i want you to notice the gradient of the line joining p q what can you say about this gradient the gradient of the line joining p q compared to the gradient of the line joining QR. I'm sure most of you learners at home are saying we are expecting these two gradients to be what? To be equal. The gradient, we expect them to be equal because it's just the same straight line. Okay? Um, so, in short, what we are saying now, uh, a line has a constant steepness the steepness is constant a straight line has a constant steepness so if we are checking the steepness here it should be the same throughout this line so we can use that idea now to check if two lines are sorry if two if three points are collinear okay what we're going to do is this is what we are going to do learners uh, we find the gradient of pq and also find the gradient of Q, of the line Q, R. If the two gradients, the two gradients, let's call this M2, M1. If the two gradients are equal, it means that those three points lies on a, the same straight line. Meaning that those three points are what? Are collinear. It's just a piece of cake. So let's go back now and just do that. Okay. So here is a question. Uh, here is a question now. Let's look at this question. Show that points P, Q, R are what? Are collinear. I want to know how to show if points P, Q, R are collinear. Okay? I want to show if those points lie on the same straight line. Okay? So we get to the gradient of what? Of P, Q. Check here. We get the gradient of P, Q. And we also get the gradient of what? Of QR. Okay, check the gradient of PQ is half. And also you know how to, the, uh, to get the gradient, okay? So we also check the gradient of QR is also half. Because the gradients, okay, are equal, hence we say the three points are collinear because they have equal gradients. Okay. Um, so I hope now we can continue. Learners at home, I'm sure you know what we mean by collinear points. We are saying if points are said to be collinear, they mean they lie on the same straight line. So please make sure you know that. And we can use their gradients to test or to show if points are collinear. They, they should have the equal gradient, okay? Uh, the line joining those uh, three points. Let's continue now in our naked second sub uh, topic, which is gradients of perpendicular lines. Okay, um, let's look at this uh, picture or this graph here. I've given you, I've given you two lines, line one and line two. Okay, notice these two lines are perpendicular, meaning that uh, they meet at an angle of ninety degrees, as, as you can tell. Okay. Uh, we want to find the gradient of these two lines. So please do find the gradient of 
these two lines learners at home and see what you are going to get. Uh, I'll give it back to Gwazi now. All right, uh, Zeli, can we take a little bit of a breather, maybe just a water break? Uh, we'll be back just after a couple of minutes. Viewers, we'll be right back after this. Uh, thank you. Hi, my name is Professor Shabang. I am an actor and a TV presenter. Coronavirus is a deadly virus, an invisible enemy killing people all over the world. We are not exempted, but together we can walk through and overcome as a nation. All we need to do is to follow the health precautions. Stay at home, stop the spread and save lives. Corona, <laughs> Sipe ngulaba pilile. Eswa tini, siba mbisene gulwa negwanza guliki wanele korona. A very warm welcome to our viewers. And that was a much needed water break as Mr. <laughs> Mamba has just told me next to me. Uh, Mr. Mamba, I think I'll let you carry on with your lesson without wasting any time. Okay, right. uh, Gwazi. Uh, viewers at home, welcome back. EGCS, uh, EGSE Mathematics Learners, let's continue. Okay, we want to start another topic now. It's a new concept for you EGCSE Mathematics Learners. We want to look at the gradient of perpendicular lines now. We know parallel lines, if lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. How about if lines are perpendicular, meaning that those lines that meet at an angle of 90 degrees, okay? So let's investigate that together, okay? Let's look at this example here with me. Um, learners at home, I want you to, um, you are given these two lines here, I want you to find the gradients of these two lines. You will see that those two lines are perpendicular so that we can investigate the relationship between the gradients of perpendicular lines. Okay, let's do it together. So find the gradient of this line one and the gradient of line two. Okay, so I'm sure quickly the gradient of line one you can tell. Line one is sloping downwards. Okay, so it has a what? a negative gradient we've mentioned that okay then now what do we need we need the value the value is given by the rise this is my rise i'm marking uh, over the run that is the horizontal distance so what is my rise my rise i can check there my rise would be what two and my run is what is here the length of this line here the horizontal line is is three so hence the gradient of this line is what is negative 2 over 3. I'm sure you've got that one. You can also use the other method of getting two uh, coordinate points that are along this line. Okay. And also the gradient of line 2 is what? Line 2, it has a, it's sloping upward and it has a what? A positive gradient. So it is positive. And what is my, my rise? In the numerator, we have a rise. Okay, what is my rise? My rise is it is 3 over, what is my run? The horizontal distance. My run is what? Is 2. Hence, the gradient of this line is what? Is 3 over 2. Remember, we're investigating the gradients of perpendicular lines. So, these two lines are perpendicular. Let's check their gradients. What do you notice? Check the gradient of these two lines, these perpendicular lines. What do you notice? 
just keep it to yourself. Let's come here quickly again and do the same thing. The gradient of this line, what is it? Let's be faster now. We don't have the whole day. So the gradient of this line, it's negative. So it's sloping downwards. It's negative. Then the rise is what? Is 2 over the run, which is what? 1. So the gradient of this line is what is negative 2. How about line 4? This line. The gradient of this line is what? Is positive. So what is the rise is 1. The run is what? Is 2. Okay. So again, let's check these values. We want to check the gradient of perpendicular lines. Are you coming up with something? It's negative 2. The other one is 1 over 2. Okay. Uh, learners, I'm sure now we can go back to that example I said you can hold. Okay. What did you notice there? The gradient of those two lines. Okay. One, this one is negative. The other one is what? Is positive. It's the same case even in our next uh, problem here. The other two lines. The uh, one is negative. The other one is positive. Okay, at least we know one is negative, the other one is positive. What else can we deduce? Okay, let's look at the value. The signs now we are okay. The value now, the number without the sign. Let's check. This one, okay. Uh, okay, this one it's negative 2 over 3. So we want to check this value. 2 over 3. This side we have a 3 over 2. There is something we can note here. You see, those two fractions, they are what? They are reciprocals of each other. By reciprocal, we mean that uh, this one is 2 over 3. The numerator is 2. The denominator is 3. The other side, we swap those two positions. Our, numer our denominator, this side was 3. That side, it becomes our numerator. The numerator, this side was 2. This side, it becomes our denominator. So we swap those positions, meaning that we reciprocate those fractions, okay? So at least now we can conclude, okay? we've got something. So this is our conclusion, dear learners, okay? Uh, we have noted those things. There's also one thing missing there. When multiplying the two gradients of perpendicular lines, we notice we get a constant, the same number, which is what? Negative one. Even the second Part. We had negative 2 and half. When we multiply those two gradients, we get negative 1. So we can conclude that this is what we can conclude now. This is our conclusion. If M1 and M2 are gradients of two perpendicular lines, these are the gradients of the perpendicular lines. So we expect when we multiply the gradients, we should get a what? A negative 1. The product of the, of the gradient gives negative 1. Okay? And also... Also here, if M1 and M2 are the gradients now of two lines, okay, and we see that when we multiply the gradient of the two lines, we get a what? A negative one. We should be able to conclude that those lines are now what? Are perpendicular because they are gradients. They give you a what? A negative one. So that's what we can con conclude, dear learners. So uh, it's quite interesting now we've added something uh, new. We knew about the gradient of parallel lines. We didn't know about the gradient of perpendicular lines. Now we know the product of the gradients of perpendicular lines. They give you a negative one. And also we did mention they have different signs. They are reciprocals of each other. I'll give you this quick uh, questions now. Please enjoy those questions with me. Find the M2, M2, the gradient of the other lines. Okay, you are given M1. Okay, you have asked to find M2. So the first thing we need to do, we have to check the relationship between the two lines. You can check those two lines. They are what? They are perpendicular. They meet at what? At that right angle. It shows that the two lines are what? Are perpendicular, this right angle. So since we know those two lines are perpendicular, we are given the gradient of one line. We are asked to find the gradient of the other line. What's the gradient of the other line, which is M2? Our M1 was 4, okay? Notice as a fraction 4 is just 4 over 1, over 1. I'm writing over 1 there. So the gradient of the other line will have a what? The, the first line is positive, so the second line will have a negative gradient. 
and the value 4 over 1 we reciprocate it and give what 1 over 4 it means that m2 is equal to negative 1 over 4 please quickly find out the gradient of m2 so the gradient of the other line in question 2 now in question 2 what is the value of m2 m2 remember it represented the gradient of this line of the other line okay uh, let me erase this so what is the value of m2 i'm sure the learners quickly now you can do this without using the the formula you just change the signs this one is a negative gradient so this one the gradient will be positive we don't write the plus okay then what do we do to the value we in, we reciprocate it it's 4 over 7 so the gradient of this oh, oh, the, the value of m2 is 4 over 7 how about uh, m2 in number 3 check first those two lines are what they are parallel parallel lines they have what very good the same gradient so the those two lines have the same gradient so m1 is 5 so m2 is also 5 in this case check m1 is 0 the gradient of this line this horizontal line is 0 what's the gradient of this vertical line obviously this i've said it in my reminder when i was saying recall the gradient of vertical lines is undefined one will say the uh, uh, when we want to write 0 as a fraction we say 0 over 1 then we if we reciprocate this uh, we'll get 1 over 0. You cannot divide by 0. Hence, you'll come back to this uh, conclusion that that, gradient has an, uh, that line has an undefined gradient. These is, are the solutions to our previous uh, problem. Now, here is another example. Find the gradient of the line perpendicular to the, to the line with this equation. So, dear learners, what we have to do is we find the gradient of this line first. What's the gradient of this line? Okay. There's something, of course, you have to remember. This equation of a line, this, equa this is the equation of a line is in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So, the, 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 the number that multiplies x, which we call the coefficient of x, is called the gradient. Okay. So given the equation, it's easier to just tell what the gradient is. So the gradient here, you can just tell it's 3 from this, the coefficient of x. So now the gradient of a line perpendicular to this line with a gradient of 3 will have a gradient of what? I'm sure now it's easier. We'll have a gradient of negative because it's positive, that one. Negative, you reciprocate. 3 is the same as 3 over 1. So it's just 1 over 3. Okay, so you get the gradient of the pepe other perpendicular line is negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing we get here using this equation you can also use. Multiply the gradient, you should get negative 1, then you make M the subject. Okay, let's continue. We are running against time. So this is our last topic. We want to look at the equation of straight lines. Okay, there's something that we know on equation of straight lines. Uh, I'm trying to be faster now. The equation of a straight line can be written in this form, dear learners. This is what you know. We have covered it. This form is called the gradient intercept form. Why? Because if you are given this equation, it's easier to spot the what? The gradient. M is called the gradient. And this C here is called the what? The Y intercept, as I've indicated here. Okay? Hence, this form is called the gradient intercept form you already know that okay so i want you to practice find the equation of this line below now so you have to remember y is equals to mx plus c so find the m the gradient of this line okay the gradient of this line is what we have to have two coordinates okay points that we can easily pick from this line we can pick this one 0 comma 3 and 4 comma 0 let's quickly get to there vertical distance and the horizontal distance the vertical distance is what so this line has a what a negative gradient sloping downward so it's negative vertical distance is what become we place it in the numerator it's negative 3 over horizontal distance which is our run is what is 4 so we have negative 3 over 4 then we can put back the x 
then plus c we say the c is the y intercept by y intercept we mean where the line crosses our y axis so where does this line cross the y axis at three so it means that we will have plus what three hence now we have the equation of this line here learners is the equation of the line y is equals to the gradient here and the y intercept okay notice this line this equation of a line we can rearrange it now that uh, this is something that is new again the last thing that is new for you learners we can rearrange this equation and write it in another form this form it's called the general form or the standard form so let's let's look at this standard form one we have this term we call that this term the term that is having x and we we'll call this term the term that is having the y and this term we called it the the, the this c the c we call it the constant term meaning the term without x and y it represents a number c we call it a constant representing a number so let's rearrange this equation to be in this form you should able to do that okay so when rearranging that equation what can we do learners i'm sure you see with the first thing we have to clear the what the fractions because there are no fractions there again please remember normally a b and the c are integers okay so they are positive whole they are whole numbers so it can be negative or positive so the first thing there we have a fraction so we need to clear the what the fraction how do we do that we multiply by the common denominator which is 4 we multiply throughout by 4 in fact we are multiplying both sides by 4 so what we are going to get is is 4y this is what we are going to get 4y is equals to this 4 and that 4 will cancel we are rem remaining with negative 3x plus what 3 times 4 is 12 then we can rearrange this to be in that form check that form we are starting with the x the term with having an x following with the term having an y and the dead side of the equal sign we have the constant term the term without x or y so let's rearrange this it means that we have to take negative 3x the other side of the equal sign so how do we do that we can plus 3x both side plus 3x both side so this goes so now we have this equation now uh, then we are going to have this equation dear learners okay when we rearrange we are going to have 3x plus 4y is equals to 12 this is the equation the general form okay so because of time i just need to conclude now this equation the learners um is very important because that form we are introduced to is very important this form is very important because it makes it easier to what to find the x and y intercept thus sketching linear graphs easily okay such ske sketches are useful in linear programming this topic you are yet to cover it i think even here linear programming so this idea will help you so um, how we do that in in conclusion what we do is the first thing we set we set we let x b we can let a so we can let y let's start with y it's up to you. you can start with y let y let y be equals to zero then now we want to have a coordinate so if our y is zero we have to find the x coordinate so you come you substitute in this equation where there is y you put a what a zero like we did here 3x plus that will get this will give us a zero hence we are here 3x is equals to 12 we get what x is equals to 4 hence we have this coordinate x coordinate is 4 the y coordinate is 0 we have 4 comma 0 so the next thing you do you set now your, your 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 x to be 0 initially we set y to be 0 now x to be 0 we come substitute here okay where there is x you put a 0 we solve for x for y so we get y is equals to 3 hence we have another coordinate notice now you just go and the plot you just go and the plot you will get this equation because of time uh, you will get this equation notice sorry you will get to this line because we want to sketch a line we want to draw the line quickly using that form so we get to this line notice we have the y intercept zero comma 
3 we've got 0 comma 3 and we also have the what the x intercept which is 4 comma 0 just from this general form just from this general form uh, just from this general form uh, where is it yes just from this general form we are talking about we can easily get to the x and y intercept so here is a question you can enjoy at home uh, the problem learners we do not have the whole day as i've said i've run out of time okay so please go to your prism alive chapter 36 you get more questions try and practice uh, you should be happy uh was Thank you very much, uh, Azueli. And like you said, we have actually run out of time. Uh, we hope to see you again for another interesting mathematics from five lesson. Yeah, I hope so. I uh, will see you soon. All right. Yes. Thank you. From fives, do not go anywhere. I will be right back with Winnie Le Lamini for an English language from five class. We'll be right back after this. now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs>